Thursday nights. Um, tonight we're going to be tying a few different uh, styled patterns. Um, one of which is very, uh, it's kind of an old school pattern actually. Um, I'm not sure when Mercer originated his glass bead caddis, but uh, I I know I've been fishing it probably for the last 10 years. I'm not even sure if it's still a production fly for him. Um, the second one, well, well, first off, we'll show you a, a glass bead. Aaron, hello. Terry, hello. Sorry about my phone. Blowing it already. Um, Peter, Bill, Pablo, hello. Um, so the first guy up, you guys can see it here. It's tiny. It's just this cool little glass glass tail caddis. A little tricky, a little fickle of a beast to tie. Um, and second up is the broke neck. And I'll bring that in there so you guys can see. It's a big fly. Pretty decently sized, I would say. Very castable, though. Guy, hello. <laughs> Parker Stone, hola. I like it. Actually, it's really funny that you said that, Parker, that you responded in Spanish. I was contemplating doing the opening lines of uh, Loon Live tonight completely in Spanish just to see what you guys thought, but uh, that, uh, that'll that have to wait for another time. So what I'll do is uh, I think we're going to start off tonight with uh, Mercer's Glass Tail Caddis. Um, I feel, feel like I need to build up to Mr. Ebers' pattern this evening, so we'll see how, see how it goes. So we're going to scoot in and... Uh, I'll throw this in the vise just so we can do it up close on it. Cool. Whoa. Let's see if I can't touch just to get that to focus. We're going to go back out just a hair. So cool. We'll see if we can't get this. That looks pretty sharp from my end. What I'm going to do is I'll put it up there. Um, so the glass tail caddis is a pretty pretty interesting little pattern. Um, I don't think these are the original beads that it used, but they're the tire speeds that I was able to get. So we have a bead head on the front. I've put in a little wing case. This is how I've been tying them. You have your caddis pupa antennas. Hey Steve, good to see you. <laughs> Matt says it's a good warm up fly. Jeff, hello, welcome. Um, and we got a little bit of, uh, Mike Mercer is pretty much a legend, man. He's got, uh, some partridge in here. He's got his own mix of dubbing that has been around by, for a long time. And then there's just a stack of glass beads. Um, I've seen this tied on a bunch of different hooks, and I tried to go over and pirate his book from him, but it didn't pan out. So, uh, I just tied it on a wide gap egg hook. So that's, uh... That's, that's what I find works best for me. It's what I've been tying it on. So hopefully that works for you guys. Um, so what I'll do is we'll drop that out. And I will get out the egg hook here. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, crush the barb just a little bit here for us. There we go. Um, and now this is the portion of the game where you lose everything because these beads are really, really small. So I try to get like a few of them. So I'm trying to gather a very tiny bead right now. So on the hook shank what we get is actually there's going to be three beads on the hook shank. Um, a brown one or a darker colored one and then uh, all the orange guys go out back. I'll show you how I prepare this pattern. So now I have to find these little tiny orange beads. <laughs> JDD, hey thanks man. Yeah, Greg Senio is a cool guy. Uh, probably one of the more entertaining humans I get to speak to. Um, in the world. So you guys can see now, and he's a he's a pretty darn good fly tire too. He's uh, does a darn good job, man. That guy's awesome. 
Okay, so stage two for this fly, this uh, this little white line that you guys are seeing back here, um, I've started using GSPs, so this is a 50 denier GSP, and what I do is I get one of the beads, and I'll try to do this on camera, this is going to be fun, as I'll get out. So you get one, and then it's kind of hanging there. I can zoom out a little bit too. And you guys have to look at me some more. Um, so what I do is I have that bead hanging there. And you don't need, you know, six inches of GSP. It doesn't help you. Um, it's kind of like threading needles because these beads are small. So we'll thread another one on. I like to uh, lick them, the thread in between, <laughs> threading these beads. So there we go. So that is going to ultimately end up being the tail segment. Okay, and this is going to get mounted in here. We'll go back up close now. Now that you guys had to suck. Oh, speaking of jackalopes, Cheech, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Miss center that up just a hair. <laughs> hey, man, we had you know, we had some really, really good weather going on here, Aaron, and uh, it was beautiful and it was nice and. I don't know, it's been raining and really cold for the last few days. And by really cold, I mean 50. Solid 50. Hey Logan, no problem. I tried to get Mike Mercer to tie it. He's gonna I'm gonna get him on here though. He uh he had he's a he's a really busy guy. Um he's getting ready to go to the uh fly show in Pleasanton next week and um, is really involved in the actual community so he wasn't able able to do this fly for you tonight but uh, he will be on a future broadcast absolutely hey Joe how's it going alright so we have our little half necklace bead string situation going on here and it doesn't matter where you catch the thread as long as you catch it so you want to bring this kind of down in here nice and tight. And because it is a GSP, I'm going to go ahead and double it back over. And then these beads will be spaced in between there. So we're going to pull a dubbing loop here. And then we'll push one of the beads back. And I just come over the bead. And we'll just stop it right there for now. Um, so what we're going to use is this is just some of his buggy nymph. And you can use uh, STS trilobal, stuff like that. I, I chop up my trilobal really short to make it look more like some buggy nymph style dubbing. Um, for short dubbing loops like this. So next up, once we have, you can see our dubbing loop here. You want a lot of play in here, so you're going to... Hey, Joe. Welcome to the live stream. Parker, that is a very interesting and probably well-debated point if you look at people who live in desert regions. Um, say, the Middle East. They typically wear that stuff and I think they sweat so much in the clothing that it actually a blocks sun and um, I don't know I've read different reports on it but it bl probably blocks the sun like you were saying that sounds much smarter than anything I was gonna go for <laughs> so you kind of horse this around these beads and you can finish up your dubbing loop here and I I'll wrap my thread back to keep 
pushing everything backwards. Then we'll trim off and it gets really buggy. And I just trim those up just a hair. I don't need it to go too crazy. Anything that's a really long offender. Hey Pablo, is it working now, buddy? I agree too, Aaron. If you care. <laughs> okay. So, next up I'm going to build our wing case. You can see this is... Uh, I'll give you guys what it is. It's the uh, Fino skin, and this is a standard brown. And I'm going to cut about a sixteenth inch strip, about three quarters of an inch long here. Bobby says, I will be at Pleasanton next weekend, Bobby. I'll be, uh, I think I'm in booth 11. I'll be tying all three days. I'll be the guy with the obnoxious amount of loon stuff in front of him, more than likely. So, once we get the wing case thrown in there, next up, we're going to uh, select a little partridge feather. Oh man, if I blow this partridge feather, I just dropped him off the back of the table, I'm done for. Hey, Sean, good evening. All right, so I don't think Mike does a full Palmer job on this, but it's just the way that I've gotten used to doing this. And I don't care which way these things go. Um, I'll just throw that out there because there's some going forwards and backwards. I want this bug to look like it's struggling as much as possible in the water. Um, pupating caddises do not, they're, they're not Michael Phelps and uh, they don't swim super well. I'm just throwing it out there. And then just a little bit of a brown dub here. Up front, you can choose whatever you would like. Probably only going to need a few wraps. You can leave the stragglers behind. <laughs> and cinch it down in there. Um, Next we're just going to get some antennas going, because you need the antennas, so some mallard. It's a good idea to buy lots of mallard. It's an important feather in the world. Hey Courtney, how's it going? Uh oh. What did I miss? <laughs> How did Aaron get onto bongs. <laughs> uh, Aaron, where are you going with this? So what I'll do is I'll pull this over, just building a small case. I like to pull a little tension there. And I think that's my own spin. I'm sure Mercer doesn't mind it. But it's just kind of the way I got into tying them. Then all I do is I take those two barbules. Oh, Phelps equals bongs. Did he get busted? I'm um, dude. I don't even watch television. I just know Michael Phelps because I saw like a picture of him or something someplace, and I know that he swims in the water. And he looks like he's eight feet tall and weighs 130 pounds. Okay, so we'll come in here with our. Little biots. Then we'll just throw a few whips in there. 
And this all gets coated with uh, UV resin, so it's all good. In my opinion, I just coat them with everything that I've got. Darken it up here a little bit on the, the brain area. Very technical term. And I'll split these guys, and I like to pin them back. And then I'm just going to add some flow to create just the littlest, uh, the head for the fly. And that, and you can see the little glass tail kicks around back there and does awesome. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's a very probably accomplished swimmer considering he was in the Olympics. <laughs> Zappa gap? Oh man, I can't uh anymore. I I don't like anything with uh real noxious odors, so but yes, you could use that. I don't personally enjoy watching paint dry. Whoa. So, the reason this fly is hanging out here tonight, really dramatic, slow pan out, I like it, um, is, oh, a four <laughs> thanks Matt, I appreciate it. Um, so the reason this guy here tonight is in the vise, or however that should be, the broke neck, as you guys can see, he's got a cool articulated neck to him. I always like it when the photos go like that. Um, is We've brought Matt Ebers on board as our one of our ambassadors for Loon, um, and we're really excited to have him here. He was nice enough to divulge his secret recipe, kind of, you know, it's like Colonel Sanders giving up stuff. So, with honor, I changed it and modified it and um, made it just a little bit different, um, but still in a way that honors, you know, his pattern and his time. 420 for the win. <laughs> June, bu June bug red flake. I like it. I'm going to need some of that, Cheech. Oh my goodness. <laughs> cool. So this has a lot of materials to it, so I uh, hope you guys have your popcorn and are uh, ready to party. <laughs> Ebers for the win, yes. Absolutely. You know, you know, I have do have to say that Matt Evers is the only ambassador who has sent me probably every single one of his uh, every single one of his flies, <clears throat> which I greatly appreciated. Um, but no, seriously, awesome tying, Matt. Great stuff. Um, so the broke neck is a articulated streamer pattern. Yes, Parker, you're crazy. This will work. Nachos. Absolutely. I love nachos. Um, so it's an articulated streamer. It comes in a multitude of colors. Um, if you guys are ever curious about ordering them, I do think Matt does take custom orders. Hopefully I'm right. <laughs> He'll probably correct me here in a second. Um, but uh, it's a cool pattern. It has a lot of great mojo going on. Um, so the, the back of the pattern is, uh, tonight I'm going to be using a uh, two-toned rabbit strip in red and black. I, I dig the red and black and my personal goal for the broke neck is to... <laughs> Please, there are thousands. Okay, so he didn't send me all of his patterns. Um, so my personal goal for the broke neck in red and black is to swing it in the Pacific Northwest and I want to swing up a steelhead on a broke neck. Um, that is probably a goal that... I may have to incorporate Cheech into after the uh, fly tying show. Um, 
but he doesn't know about that yet. So I uh, cut off a nice little chunk of rabbit strip here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I just have a bad habit of trimming out my tails, and I'm going to separate that. I'm going to get real good purchase on this guy here. And you can do the finger lick trick if you are so inclined here. And then I'm just going to work forward. Um, and this is going to be pulled over the top of our pattern at the end. His Instagram page is awesome. He's He's got some uh, extremely, extremely strong skills going on there. I dig it. <laughs> Brown noser. Oh, it's a kilt. GH, we have clarification. It's actually a kilt, buddy. Um, so, I incorporated some peacock into this pattern. It's not the correct material. Um... But it's a cool, gives me a cool reflective feeling, if you will. Um, and kind of keeping with my theme, I'm going to be using a uh, Hairlines Divey, or Diveed, Dyed UV Polar Chenille and Red UV. So what I'll do is I'll pull off about oh, five or six inches of this tack it in there. If I get going too fast for you guys, let me know. I get into uh, commercial tying mode and I kind of lose sight of time. Place space continuums a little bit. Nothing's complete with, uh, I'm going to add a, a grizzly in here. A little grizzly saddle as well. work my way up front. So my first order of business that I'll do is weed out if there's some shorties on the peacock and I'm just gonna palmer the body with the peacock. Imagine a giant prince nymph. Now peacock's not very strong so we will be reinforcing it. <laughs> Take care Clark, we'll talk to you soon man. So there we go. If you want to find out the, the real recipe, the exact recipe, you're going to have to dissect one of Mr. Evers' patterns. But I dig the peacock in there, and it's just a fun, playful variation on his pattern. So I'm going to go uh, a little bit complex twist, I think is what Cheech calls this, and uh, I'm going to build up a cool little reinforcement area here. Once I get up front and tack this down, what I'll do is I'll let it spin back out so I can use, I want a little bit more of the saddle in there. It talks to me, I don't know why. So we'll brush everything backwards, get everything secured out of the way. And I'll just do a few wraps with this grizzly saddle here.
and secure. Now I'm going to come in here and attack thoroughly with my pick, trying to get everything to come out as best as possible. Matt, hopefully you're not rolling over, uh, dying, laughing at me, trying to tie your fly there, Mr. Matt. Um, I'll separate again, and I'll just get a lash down point. The black and white feather is uh, just a, a saddle hackle. So I have remnants in the world of uh, pre-hair craze stuff. So this is uh, kind of the more schlappany uh, section of a saddle hackle. I kind of cut my saddles into pieces so I don't have to yard around the whole enchilada, if you will. Um, <laughs> it would work really well. Uh, I may or may not have already stuck the ones that Matt sent me in my streamer box for up there. Um, so yeah, it's a, it would be a great pattern for up there. Um, so tonight we're going to be using a cool, different little leg variation here. If you guys can see these, I'll bring them in front. We have, uh, if you guys can see as I alternate it, it goes from copper to red. So these are uh, Mr. Senyo's fusion legs, and uh, they're pretty they're pretty small. So I'm going to use three just to create the effect that we're looking for. And then I just really wrap those in there. And we'll go ahead and whip finish at this point for stage one. So all articulated flies come in two parts. And that's just phase one. And just to be really anal, I'll just color that all up and darken it down. hit it with some flow. Man, I, uh, I've been putting them on all these legs on all my steelhead flies, like all my bunny leeches and stuff, and like kind of like a curb feeler um, for swinging, and I've been very, very happy with the result. Uh, they work really well. I'll just say that. Anytime you can put sparkles on rubber legs, I think you just made some magic, Mr. Senyo. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pin that guy back and get my legs out of the way here just a little bit. Usually I have like a hair clip, but I don't know what I've done with it. Hey Frankie, how's it going? It is not the same hook that Evers uses. <laughs> I can answer you that. It's close. The hook tonight that I used, let's see if I can set that beast down in there. There we go. Um, the hook that I used tonight is the uh, somewhere. It's the uh, Attitude streamer from Partridge and a one on. It's a pretty, it's a pretty equally evil hook to what uh, Mr. Evers is up using. Hey, CDR17. Um, yes, you can change this up. Uh, tans, browns, uh, olives, make them look like a bluegill. Um, so when you're tying in the front right here, you could do like an orange or belly with a green top, throw some blue in there, make it look like a small bluegill. Um, sky's really the limit. So you can ch change these styles of flies for colors to fit your area. 
but I think it'd be a wicked effective uh, um, bass fly as well. Copy. <laughs> Look at all those wraps I put on there, man. That's horrible. <laughs> These are some big eyes. It's like uh, some big bad wolf stuff going on here. Um, the open metal front piece is a uh, is just called a it's just a shank, um, and it's t it's made up by a company called uh, Flyman Fishing. I'll show you the packaging here in a second. Might have to just let it let it roam free. Scared of that hook though. <clears throat> so here's here's what the shank is. I know I had a question. It's a twenty mil shank. And uh, it's a fish skulls articulated shank, and you can uh, <laughs> try and keep up. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. Alrighty. Monkey and a football. Oh man. That's rough. Alrighty. So what I do is I'm just gonna throw in a uh, another little variation here, a little bit more peacock for a bump, and then we'll bring back in some UV chenille, just a wrap or two, and then uh some more uh, witness protection program stuff going on. But the outcome's pretty cool. So that's just a little peacock bump. And uh, we'll throw some more of this. I love this chenille. And Oh, I, I I don't get too caught up in that uh, in the trailer hooks anymore. All I tie like every day is big intruders, so I don't I don't stress about it too much. I was just playing around, but it is a good good idea. I used to always use a uh, a pencil eraser, actually. Nerf darts are expensive. Um, so this is a cool product that I'm gonna use in lieu of the actual material. This is a uh, craft fur brush. And it's a uh, red black, so it plays into our color scheme. And we'll just palm around a few wraps of this. And you could you could fit other materials in here too that you. Uh, It's kind of cool these craft fur brushes have a little bit of uh, a UV flash in there. So, a little extra dimension there. Well, Aaron, you might be right, but I might have changed it for protective purposes. Parker says, uh, "Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it would. It's a great. It's a great, great uh, brush. I'm stoked you're using them. 
It's one of my favorites. Actually, I use them on a lot of my intruder stuff. Um, and for the head, kind of like in the picture, I'm going to be using a uh, Fly Fish Food Bruiser Blend in black. Uh, the size of the eyes, um, I don't know, they're random. They're like a large, Matt would be able to answer that, but they're a big eye. It's like a large uh, real eye. If I showed you my box of eyes, you guys would laugh, so I won't show you. Nothing gets by air. <laughs> I think he just sits there at night, Matt, and like studies the broke neck. <laughs> uh, uh, the craft fur brushes, uh, hairlines distributing them, uh, and I think anywhere that sells hairline stuff should have them. Um, or if you have a like a fly shop near you that sells hairline products they could they would definitely be able to order them for you so this is OG bruiser blend the original so it's really really big so I trim it in half and then lash her down cool once I get that brushed out will lay in the bottom like the throat so when you guys are doing this this is where you could vary the colorway of the pattern you could you know talking about fishing for bass go out there with a mealworm see what you catch and then make these look like the mealworm eating fish you know probably gonna be like a pumpkin seed or a bluegill um, something along those lines and that's what you would want to try to replicate with your pattern Danny good evening yes yes yeah you man that is uh, it was a Cheech's video on making craft fur brushes is really cool uh, I think it's the best craft fur selling device ever. Um, brushes are fun to make. Uh, I, if you guys have never made your own brushes, I'd strongly recommend trying. It's kind of like blending your own dubbing, as it's really fun and not only entertaining to see what you come out with, but it's it's really cool to see kind of how the colors go together from different dubbing blends that you, you know, may have been buying for like a long time. There's uh, there's a lot to it and it's a cool science to get behind and it's kind of like why I started getting back into tying flies some many years ago after a hiatus is because I wanted to catch fish on stuff that I created. Yeah, the fro gets trimmed out though. So I'll throw a few whip finishes in here. And then we brush and primp. You didn't know he was the, he was punk rock. So I'm going to bring in some of our flow, and this is actually the fluorescing flow. So you can see that black spot glowing where it normally wouldn't have. That's the fluorescing activity going on. Alrighty. Now it's time for uh, barber, some barber school.
And you guys can throw gill plates in here. I have a lot of red, so I didn't opt to. And I just kind of come through with grazing cuts and more of a tapering than anything when I've been tying with this material. Once I get this spring to release my legs back here, pesky springs. I never use my springs. Tonight I decided to throw them in the vise. Um, let's see. Um, Carl, okay, so let's see. Carl asks, how much faster is it to cure uh, with the Megalite? And it varies. It's obviously going to vary on batteries, but I'm getting anywhere between on uh, like with flow and thin and a smaller uh, application of the product, anywhere between six to seven seconds for a complete cure. Matt may want me to trim the head of this a little bit more. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Let's see if we can get them to get broken in here. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's not going to uh, sit there very well, but we'll just put a pin in there. Um, what am I using for a brush? Uh, this, if you're speaking to the terms of this little guy, it's just a Stonfo. It's got a brush on one end and velcro on the other side and it seems to work pretty well round them out a little bit more so let's see thanks Brian I appreciate it Thanks, Matt. I appreciate the compliments, being that it's your pattern. Let's see. Matt, uh, I, I do have an Instagram. It's uh, so Callies, like Sam, Oscar, Charlie, Apple, Larry, Laria, India, Edward, Sam. 23, <laughs> if that makes sense. Aaron can type it in for you. Uh, thanks, Courtney. I appreciate it. I'm going to zoom out. Where'd my hat? I had a hat. I thought I had a hat. I had to take the hat off. It's hot in here. Wife must have uh, cranked the heater up on me. So yeah. So there we go. Two patterns tonight. We got the, we did the, uh, the broke neck, which is killer. I'm going to catch a steelhead on that, I think. Thank you, Aaron. I'm too used to throwing out phonetic alphabets. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> and uh, our little cat is tonight, guys. So, uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. And if you guys are going to be anywhere near the Bay Area, if uh, that's where you live, Sacramento, or with, I know some guys try, drive to the uh, Pleasanton show from like San Diego. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. I took the tank down, Bill. I'm sorry. Um, I meant to have it back up, and life happened. And children excited about the 45 minutes they got to see me before. Uh, thanks, Guy. I appreciate it. Um, Bobby, what am I tying at the fly fishing show? I'm going to be tying uh, steelhead flies, trout flies, uh, streamers. Uh, Pretty much, I have three days to tie, and I'm bringing a rolling tool chest, the thing of materials. So it's going to be a lot of different patterns, a lot of different stuff. Mark, thank you. I appreciate it. NBFL Fly Guide, I appreciate it. Thank you. Gabe, I'm going to be tying kicktails and also my Bass Buster, which has a kicktail. 
Tungsten Swing Caddis. You know what? When I get Mike Mercer to come do this, um, he's going to tie two of his patterns. I don't know what he's going to do yet, but uh, he'll be pretty stoked. <laughs> Frankie, I wish I could do one more, but uh, I'm all kind of stuck in there. I think next week... Hey, I appreciate that the most, Matt. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I didn't butcher your pattern. Um, Steve? Uh, Right on. Bishop, I would, I, I would like to be in Bishop too, Steve. Doesn't sound like a bad place to be. Um, so up next week, I'm going to figure out something wild, but we're going to be tying uh, one of uh, my buddy's patterns, Mr. Shea Gunkel. He's a umqua tire, and uh, he has this thing called a shot glass betis. He's like, man, you should tie it. So I'm going to tie it for him because it's his request and his fly. Um, and we'll figure out something something else fun yeah maybe we'll do a midge pattern or maybe I'll maybe I'll get crazy and do four flies if they're not really time-consuming articulated 58 step models um, the UPS midge okay no taken Joe I appreciate it thank you Bobby I'll see you at the show Oh yes, Granny Wiggles. I'll tie some articulated intruders, definitely. Don't worry. I love those things. Alrighty, guys. I'm going to go try to uh, tame two wild, unruly beasts who are actually quiet tonight. It's a good thing. Um, and we'll catch you in two weeks if I don't see you guys at the show. Hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Maybe I won't shut it off because I don't know how. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.